Back recently here on Road Trip, our two hosts of Able and On Air, Rolling Camel, asked me to be one of our guests on the show. Today, we took another round of me, of all things, we will talk about sports and one subject that is really not as crazy as it be. And today's episode, we go back to 2018, episode that we recently taped that I was a caller and it's at the studio of Orca over in Montclair, Vermont. So stay tuned. It's a sports interview with you me. Able on air. That's next. And for Hudson Yards here in New York City. I'm Ron Rodden. And this is Road Trip. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Molly Seiler. And this is the program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled in Vermont and beyond. And besides Orca Media, uh, we, are, um, we are now in Burlington on Channel 17, um, which is um, the Democracy Channel. And uh, we are broadcasted on there as well. Uh, we would like to welcome Ron Rondon, our, our sports anchor for this uh, for this show. Uh, welcome, Ron. Hello there. And uh, what is the show that you do? Of course, Road Trip with Ron Rondon is kicking off season number five, coming up on October fifth on Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Wow. Okay, now Brooklyn Free Brooklyn Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Um, is what? What kind of uh, station is it again? So for well, people we're representing know? all of most of Brooklyn, all of Brooklyn, of course, representing from our friends at Optimum and Spectrum, and also RCN, and also on Verizon Files. So in any of these areas, 
there, check it out. And, of course, we're also online on at BreakArtsMedia.org. Also on our social media platforms, you can check it out on our Facebook page, Road Trip with Ron Rondon, and, of course, on Road Trip TV 1 on YouTube. So a lot of pop And some of the social medias here is we'll put it on the air. We'll post it. If you're watching Road Trip right now, we'll post all this on the air, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, explain to me what have you been doing on Road Trip uh, from season one all the way up to now? Well, for the last four seasons, from pop culture to entertainment to news to exciting charitable events, we've done a lot of them, including recently the tape. This one, this one of them will be featured in season number five. We did a special benefit over at uh, Trough Fontaine in Avenue in Brooklyn. It was a... Uh, one of our friends, Jack Giafranco, we got a big shout out to him, did a special benefit to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Charities. And it's a St. Jude's Children's Hospital in, of course, Memphis, Tennessee. It's for real, believe me. And we raised sorry, shirts and lighted friendship necklaces. I won one before. It was just fantastic. You guys and raised a lot of money? these goals to them. And out of all that, raised over six. Two hundred dollars raised to uh, St. Jude's Children's Charity. So it's a now St. Jude's. So th this is part of St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. That's a cancer hospital. Yes, it is it for is. cancer kids who have cancer yes, who want is. to end fight. And it says according to St. Jude's, it says they don't pay; they buy their own pockets. It's the people to donate whatever they do and to help the kids get better out of all kinds of surgeries and all kinds of stuff. Now, because there's also some other cancer hospitals in New York. You have uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, you have some others, but what makes St. Jude's uh, a little bit different than some of the other hospitals? It's for kids, and remember, kids who had cancer who are battling to uh, about a number of illnesses like uh, from throat cancer to pancreatic to just a number of kind of cancers. And we always pray for a lot of kids, and that's what this great organization that uh, Jackie Del Blanco, who organized this event, is fantastic. And it was a lot of music, it was a lot of fun, having a great time. Mm. And of course, we got some terrific performers who's fantastic, including uh, our good friend Teo, who is the voice of Naples. He did sensational, making great Italian songs. Mm -hmm. He's like an operatic voice. He is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got uh, Maria Bernudo is also performing, and, of course, Francis is also performing. It's fantastic, and you'll see all the highlights during the season. Mm -hmm. And among the other mm -hmm. stuff as well, we got the San Gennaro Festival this year, oh, including yeah. the meatball eating contest. Well, and okay, speaking about meatballs, um, oh, oh, yeah. um, we, we here at um, Orca Media um, just debuted, um, able, well, we, we do Able Then on there, of course, but we just debuted, uh, my wife and I just debuted a new show uh, called um, Able to Cook, which deals with people with special needs and cooking. And since you say about meatballs, tell us a little bit more about that. What, what's going on with the meatballs? Well, the meatball eating contest is some brave and fierce eaters who compete for the for the top prize anyway of two hundred fifty dollars. That's what they wow. Eat out. So is, is the meatball wow. was the meatball eating contest similar to the um, is it similar to the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? It's like a similar. It's a little different between the hot dog eating contest mm -hmm. and the meatball eating contest because the the sponsor, by the way, is Chacha's. That's located in um, Little Italy, mm -hmm. and I want to get a big shout out to Karen King, who's the, one of the restaurateurs and one part owner of Charge House, along with the fantastic Tony Danza. And you all know who Tony Danza is. Yes, I mean, we know. Who's yeah, the boss? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's the boss? So he was he, the, he was there, and you interviewed him. Well, we didn't get a chance to interview him, but he was there recently uh, back in our third season that uh, Cousin Brucey interviewed the great Tony Danza, who's also part restaurateur and owner, and he's also does for the Police Athletic League, and if I win that competition, I'm going to be donating about a fifth of the proceeds will go to the Police Athletic League 
you hear it throughout the New York City area. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, if I win, but that's what we'll, that's going to be an early start. But it's going to be great, and it's fantastic. And we'll have the highlights of the event, and that's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll get Joey Reynolds. We get... We say we're Joey Reynolds will be here with one of the judges, Karen Keynes. I told you before, she's going to be judging and singing national anthem. She's a terrific all-around American mm-hmm. pop standard singer. She is absolutely fantastic. So wow. come on down. Before we get before we get to um, uh, sports, uh, what else have you been doing? So you have the fifth season coming up. A big uh, season number five. Yes. How many? How many? Um, how many shows have you done th- thus far? Well, for the fifth season, it will be show number one hundred and forty this year. Wow! Mm. Wow! Wow! Congratulations. Thank you very much. Because it takes it takes a lot of people to get to uh, show 140. Yes, we have a good crew. We have a great staff. We started with just about two people. We have a growing staff of uh, contributors to the show, from Mark Kurtz to Phil Matters, or and Phil started got me into this, and you got me into this, and then and then you got Audra Blackwood, who's also doing the camera work. Uh, Nikki Ferguson camera work this season. Also, we got uh, from good photography as well. Uh, Mike Wright, who's a fantastic guy, midward who not only covers some events, but he also did the Italian events as well. He's also going to be contributing this year. We're going to have a, we have a very great crew this season, and we can't wait. to make lasting friendships with people I still keep in touch with today. Because of camp, I learned about self-esteem. Because of camp, I play guitar. Because of camp, I am sending my kids to camp this summer. I learned that I was the best Tarzan yeller in the camp. Because of camp, I got a personality. Now I'm... (laughs) Because of camp, I turned out just fine. You want to get into broadcasting? What was the major thing that, yeah, you know, despite your special needs, what what was the major thing that wanted you to get into broadcasting? Well, you know, my big dream is to like to get into sports. That's the first thing that started me off here. And then when D says, "Do you have a good?" Everybody told me you have a good radio voice. That's that's what got me into internet radio. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Kismir Elberg, who used to host all your on on what's the on talk show radio and also if I remember the other one from before. But you you she has a great show and then when you got me hosting into this, 
I got my weekend show for the last seven seasons, and it was a lot of fun. Is, so, you, is your weekend show still going on? At not at this time, because right now with Fox TV, TV is the people want to fill up our audience and build a lot of good fans up there because we have a terrific, terrific show, and we got everybody on the mm -hmm. internet, everybody on social media likes the show, everybody, and we got and we also put in a little extra effort. We also put a segment every season that will be the NFL pick. It will be Sports Fan NFL Picks Challenge, which I'll be doing along the season during the road trip, which is going to be a lot more fun because we want, because I know, Arlene, you're in it this season again. This yeah. Season again, we got some terrific contestants who are facing for bragging rights and the title. Uh, this season, of course, um, Eric Spice, who is terrific in New Jersey. He's our defending champion last season. But Elizabeth Melton is not with us, unfortunately. She recently passed away back in September. Uh, so we're going to crown a brand new woman champion this season. So this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a two uh, segments. It's going to be two segments, double season one. So the winners from the first half of the season, which is one to eight, will face the winners from the second segment, from the Nine to sixteen will face in the season in season week seventeen showdown to determine our champion for the season. So this is gonna be a lot of fun and if you wanted to join us, you can go to my Facebook page mm -hmm. and just check out Facebook and type in Sports Fan NFL Challenge. That's the Sports Fan NFL Picks Challenge on Facebook mm -hmm. and join us on no you don't have to pay anything. It's a lot of fun. It's breaking right check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um so in terms of, you know, baseball, now this year uh, the New York Yankees have been doing pretty good. Uh, Boston, eh, uh, who well, is your... Yeah, he's already locked up the Eastern Division, that's why. Who, who is your all-time favorite team, and why do you think they should go to the, um, to the World Series? Well, you know the Yankees have won 27 championships already. Looking for a win, so 28th championship coming up this year. And look how big the Yankees got. You got a power hitter lane, uh, Aaron Judge, who has been outstanding. 52 home runs, rookie. You can't say a better rookie of the year than he is. He's outstanding. Then you got John Carlos Stanton, who fired for the Miami Marlins, who's been outstanding. He's in there. He had a full start. He came up and contributed. Gary Sanchez, another home run hitter who's also a home run derby champion. He did a magnificent mm -hmm. job. And then you got the best pitcher, Ramos Chapman, who yeah. is the closer. You are looking at a great pitching duo this year. Mm -hmm. You'll be looking at them. So you can see the Yankees in the World Series. On the other hand, the defending champion, Houston Astros, which I'm surprised they got it all. This is their first ever championship. And you got a lot of things from Ross Springer and uh, a number of uh, great players who've been incredibly done. Uh, so this is going to be like a championship, uh, ALCS championship rematch. You'll be looking at them mm -hmm. this season. And then you mm -hmm. look at the Washington Nationals, another good team with Bryce Hopper. It could be, you could see them in their first ever World Series for their franchise. Mm -hmm. Well, be, some, they, so, I, I mean, I think the real big money makers here, uh, because, you know, those, uh, those money makers are the ones that have the the top salaries, yeah. um, uh, the Yankees and Boston, because yeah. um, all the other teams are small. Well, they're not small, but they don't have um, such big hitters as um, like the Mets, you know. Like, well, the Mets, the Yankees, and and, and Boston Red Sox. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, think about the other teams also who got the uh, big salaries. Like, for example, Texas Rangers is one team, and another team. You look at the Dodgers, who's looking outstanding after a terrific World Series appearance and came that short when Houston won the championship. There's another possibility. So you're looking at great teams who. Yeah. Out. Uh, for example, but, I mean, we talk about special needs, but we. Uh, in terms of baseball, you've got people such as um, the wife of um, Thurman Munson, who, right. who has a foundation uh, and she gives money towards autism. You have people such as 
uh, uh, Jorge Posada, whom I've interviewed in the past in, in, in New York, in the Bronx. He's outstanding. He's one of the best players. Dealt. Jorge Posada has a, a foundation for autism. Hmm. Um, and he so also got Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's foundation, yep. Yeah, and, and, huh? So looking at the great charities, everybody contribute because let me tell you something. They're the best kind of Yankee players went on to do their own foundation. And this is why they're the best players ever. So you give a lot of them to say yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. And that's why all yeah. these players did. So um, in terms of football, um, who, who do you think is, is the best this year? Um, well, looking you know, going at the, forward. Well, let's see. Best of the teams. I'm really surprised. It was a surprising team because I, we, since we're taping the show today, by the way, hey, um, on our, since we're taping it, the Cleveland Browns surprised us all so far. They already won. They got a tie. They lost one. And now they won one because they beat the Jets. Yeah. And how about this great Cleveland Browns team? This is going to be, this is like, this is like a rebuilding of Every single loss there is, is if you go back like an old 16 team, and right now they're 1-1-1 one, one, and one going into yeah. week four coming up. And then you've got the Jets, that's who got a very good quarterback, but they came up a little short this year. Yeah. And the Giants, well, so far 0-2, but it's time to put a change around on the team. But to my knowledge, I'm looking at mm -hmm. a terrific Super Bowl. I'd like to see the Eagles go back to the Super Bowl to win their second championship because I am surprised. I'm surprised by the way team, and big shout out to the fans mm -hmm. of Philadelphia. Best team. I hope, I'm not, I hope it's not. Well. I hope it's not the New England Patriots again. Eek. Yeah, I don't want to say Patriots, but yeah. we beat the Patriots. Thank God for that. So yeah. So, we had Tom England. Brady. Oh, the wife. The wife gets so mad. The wife. <laughs> um. Hi everybody, this is Alexander Pridman, and I'm hosting a new show called Alexander Lab on Brooklyn Free Speech. Join me every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Alexander Lab on Brooklyn Free Speech Channel 2. I'm Dr. Drew. A couple years ago, my wife Susan encouraged me to get screened for prostate cancer. I even made the appointment for him. And so I went, and they found out I did have prostate cancer, and we had caught it in time. We were lucky. Yeah, men, don't put it off like I did. Get it checked. And ladies, even if you're married to a doctor, men are men. Go with your instincts. Help them take the first step. And for more information, visit the Prostate Cancer Foundation at PCF.org. His health depends on it. <laughs> I used to never really talk, ever. I was scared and shy. I, it was hard to look at people's faces. I, I was afraid if I said something wrong, everyone would laugh at me. But then I started to play golf with Special Olympics. I made friends and won lots of gold medals. But I learned more than just playing golf. Special Olympics helped me to find my voice. And now everyone else is speechless. Uh, if you're a parent, this is a message for you about TV commercials. Now, your children see lots of them, and with your guidance, they can learn a lot from them. Commercials can help you do your job when it comes to teaching your children a sense of values, what is and isn't important and why. Commercials can help you teach them the value of a dollar, how to decide what's worth the money, and what saving is all about. Why not use TV commercials to help your children? Hmm? <laughs> Okay, let's uh, talk about something else for a second. Um, recently, uh, in New Jersey, um, this past week, uh, recently there was a gentleman um, in the group home, uh, well, he was in a, a New Jersey group home who had gotten uh, involved in a hit and run 
uh, he and he passed away in um, Garfield, New Jersey. A man has been arrested in connection with a uh, fatal hit and run in New Jersey. Officials say uh, Paul Fisher, 59 of uh, New Jersey, was arrested in multiple charges, including leaving the scene of a fatal accident and endangering uh, a, an injured victim. Uh, Garfield police responded to the call of a pedestrian struck, struck <clears throat> by a hit and run vehicle uh, this past Monday at 7 p.m. Um, when officers found 42-year-old 42, 42 Giovanni Rivera lying in the roadway on MacArthur Avenue and um, with serious injuries. Rivera, <coughs> Rivera was transported to the hospital where he <coughs> later passed away from his injuries Wednesday morning. Um, uh, your uh, thoughts on that? You know, it's, it's, it's sad because, you know, uh, I know I see a lot of people who are, who are disability, and I've never seen a hit-and-run driver who has got hit. But the only question is, did they capture the man that yes, is? Yes, yes, yes. yes. They oh, they can't, they, because they, they got a lot to get a lot to learn. Because this runner, this hit-and-run driver, has got plenty to say about. Because I don't like what he did to this um, to this. Um, um, because when you when you deal with, um, uh, you know, cars and pedestrians, you it, it's considered murder or um, yeah, vehicular homicide. Yeah. When when um, uh, when someone passes away. Absolutely, but I'm going to say one thing for sure because you know they should have put like uh, like pedestrian like. You know, over in Patterson, New Jersey, they need some special kind of lights for disabilities. If anybody has a walk problem or anything, they have to need a special lighted path to pass to let the pedestrians go first before the drivers does. Because what he did to the drivers without the uh, light or with the stop sign, does he really go for the stop sign? That could be possible. Does he stop or does he go speeding like about 60 miles an hour? That's bad. It's time that Congress or the representatives in, the, in their states to suggest to put some lighted uh, uh, because the street properties like in the white and the red box and everything else, it's not going to be enough. It's time to put them to work to put a lighted yeah. uh, walkway and so when the, pass, when the projections pass through, we'll let the car stop. That's what they have to do. Yeah, I agree. I agree because this way, don't, this way, don't this be so go, don't be so close to the phone. You're you're breaking up a little bit. Go ahead. Because when when the passion, when the pedestrians pass by to it, it will be very important and understandable to let the car stop and let them mm -hmm. pass. Because it's time to start building up and get some more resources and everything else. Yeah. To go away. That's what they got to do. That mm. I agree because there should be something there. Okay, right. so so getting back to sports um, before we end because we have a couple of minutes left here. Um, uh, your predictions for 2019 and the uh, Super Bowl. Well, let's see. I was still going to say Philadelphia will go into one, of them, but I like to see an upset. The first timers, and I like to see first timers. Since Philadelphia did it for the first time, I want to see another first time we get into a Super Bowl, and that's got to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm -hmm. The reason I said Jacksonville, they came that close to winning a Super Bowl, but in the regular season at home, they got their revenge and beat New England last week. So, if I think if this continues to be the case, we could see a Philadelphia Jacksonville Super Bowl mm -hmm. in their presence. So this is going to be a very important year, and I like to see that happen. And of course, if any football fans in Philadelphia, I know I'm proud of them. I applaud them for what they did, and I hope the next word, if Jacksonville should win the Super Bowl, I will also respect them. They will have their first ever celebrations in the city of Jacksonville. So either way, mm -hmm. this is going to be a Super Super Bowl coming up. Super Bowl Fifty Two. So it's going to be very. Uh, 
uh, what's your predictions with basketball this year? Because, uh, you know, we have a pretty good matchup. Well, I like the... I like, to, I like to see the Knicks and the Lakers battle it out, but Knicks is not good. Um, right now, we got we got LeBron heading to Los Angeles, so this is going to be a big, big difference right now. Why do you say the Knicks are not good? What, what happened? The bad. Last year, they were a little bit unsure, like they're in fourth place. But I like to see if they can do better to get at least to third or second place in order to get into the playoffs because they're going to go like a number set and becoming a seven-seeded team, and that's going to be a very important challenge for the Knicks because if they don't get to the playoffs, right. they can get a good effort on that. What about the Brooklyn Nets? For the Brooklyn Nets, well, I think they're going to get at least to a 12th seed. So mm -hmm. that's going to be very – that's going to be a 12th seed, but that's going to be – in the number of eight seeds. So it's mm -hmm. going to be, we'd like to see two New York teams get into the seven and eight seeds. Yeah. And then hope they can work their way up to the NBA second round. So sure, yeah. that's, that's as far as we can go. Yeah, maybe they need to build a staple center. Well, so, since you're talking about the Lakers, maybe they need to build a staple center here in, or some kind of big, huge uh, basketball stadium here in Vermont. Uh, then we can really have some ma matchups. And it would be great. If they can put one more, like, if they can, if, however, there's just one thing I would say. That since you guys got the Vermont Lake Monsters right there in, in Montefiore, can it be a very, you know, this is, this is my question here. If they have a baseball team in France because they're looking for one more extension team or a hockey extension team because Vermont is home well, to Well, Vermont, <clears throat> Vermont has, I mean, uh, UVM, uh, the uh, Catamounts, uh, at, at, at UVM College, the uh, College of uh, Vermont, uh, we have a pretty good hockey team this year. It's it's gone to semifinals and finals, and, you know, um, yeah. in the past. So we we have a pretty good team. Well, right now uh, the NHL already got thirty one teams. So if they could do something, if they can build a well, it's NC, it's NCAA, it it's NCAA Ron. It could be thirty. We have we have NCAA hockey. You know. Yeah. yeah, we know, we know. But yeah. can we get a professional team if they can make it as an extension team? They need one more extension team so they're going to make it all even to 32 teams. So you already got 31 so far at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, um, we would like mm -hmm. to thank you. Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> what do you think about the people suffering in, in that, that storm, Florence, Hurricane Florence? Oh, uh, my. Well, I yeah, well, well, let me say talk about that. Let me say to my final word before we go. I want to say our fourth and prayers to all the victims down in in South Carolina and North Carolina. I got a friend named Ben Melsky. Ben, if you're watching, big hi to you. I want to say our thoughts and prayers, and we hope we can build, rebuild this whole thing. I hope the Red Cross can help a lot of people during this hurricane yeah. season. So we we'll all pray for they're supplying them clothes and shelter. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they're supplying them with clothes and shelter and stuff. Because ha Hurricane Sandy was just as bad uh, as this. Yeah. And, like, and, 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 and you saw the rest of the rest of the rest of some animals in the, in the cages. They rested some animals. Exactly. That, that's what. So we we'll hope we can get some rescuers and hope we can rescue some best so yeah. so, the best. So home for the so really quick. Back. Uh, what is your uh, websites again? Okay, you can check out Facebook.com, look up for Road Trip for Ron Rodden, or you can go to YouTube and look for the Road Trip TV <coughs> one channel. And, of course, uh, we also got our Pinterest, mm -hmm. our LinkedIn, on Google+, Plus, and also on did I get everybody? And on Twitter, that's Ron underscore Road Trip TV. And, of course... Again, you'll get a copy of this program, so you can show it in, in uh, Brooklyn as yeah. well. Um, just to let you know, uh, Able and On Air is also, uh, besides Arca Media, we are um, broadcasting on Channel 17 in Burlington. Um, just to let you know, before we end, this program today uh, and uh, this week is, uh, is, um, is in memory of someone who, here who died in Montpelier, Vermont, um, Solomon Jenkins, uh, senselessly pa passed away uh, in an automobile accident, and uh, we just would like to say um, uh, to to his family and friends, uh, we are truly sorry, sorry, and uh, we are um, 
you know, saying condolences to the family and this program is is um, is to his memory, Solomon Jenkins. Uh, we would like to thank Ron Rondon for uh, joining us on this edition of Able Den on Air. Ron, thank you. It's a pleasure to be mine, and uh, we can't wait to see you guys on our show and, of course, also the cooking one. You can send us a yeah, we're going to send you copies of that as well. Okay. And uh, that is also running on Channel 17 in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, this puts an end to this edition of Able Dinner and Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. So there you have it, folks. Able and on air. Thanks again to Onion River Community Assets. Our Able Assets event on the way in Portland. And we thank them. Thank you for getting me back. Again, back in 2000. And if you want more on Able and our Assets on their show, all you have to do is go to the YouTube page and check out Able and and you can also check out Orca TV. That's O C O R C A. That's O R C A. dot TV. That will be every bit of information on the show. All right, folks. That is it for this week's road trip. I hope you join us again. Yes, this is in our third one for 15 seconds. And it's the one we've all been waiting for. And I've been waiting to say this. So the countdown is here. It's finally during the month of May. So here it is. Our next show, it's Game Show Watch for the 400th episode. It's Game Show 4. Everywhere you want to check out. It's fun. It's game. It's crazy. And our first will host every week. That's next time. And This is a Ron Rondon video production in association with Art Kurtz and Phil Manners Television Productions. This is Don Wilson saying good night.